Hello, my name is Connor Smith. I'm the outboard suspension designer for the Team Bath Racing Formula Student Team based at the University of Bath. I'm going to be speaking today about gaining a competitive advantage with rapid design exploration technologies. But first, what actually is Formula Student? So Formula Student is an international motorsport engineering competition where teams from around the world design, build and then compete a single seater open wheel Formula style race car. As you can see, there's a huge number of teams around the world competing at over 15 competitions on five different continents. The way every competition works is there are a thousand points available and these are split up into a variety of events. The first is the dynamic events. So these consider, consist of acceleration, which is a straight line acceleration event. Skid pads, which is a figure of eight, where the car's steady state handling ability is pushed to the limits. Then sprint, which is a single lap of a short, twisty track, really pushing the car's handling to the limits. Then is endurance, which is the uh, standout event of every competition. This is a 20 kilometer event on a track very similar to the sprint course, pushing both the car's performance, the driver's endurance, and also the car's reliability to the limits. Finally, efficiency, where the amount of either fuel or electric energy the car uses during the endurance event is judged and ranked. The second set of events are known as the static events. These are made up of design where both not both not just the design of your car is judged, but also your engineering understanding and your engineering decision making behind all of your decisions are judged. Cost, where you have to present full costings of your car. And for reference, we go down to the cost of individual nuts, bolts, adhesives. It goes to the complete bare roots of manufacturing the car. And finally, business, where we present a business case for taking this prototype race car into a sustainable business model. And now a little bit about Team Bath Racing. So we were founded in the year 2000, make us one of the oldest UK teams based at the University of Bath. We're typically made up of around 25 final year master students, all studying mechanical engineering. Some of our highlights include winning former student check in 2016, and we were the first UK team to ever win a former student event outright. Third in the very competitive former student Austria in 2018, and most recently winning a virtual former student UK in 2020. Now, what sets Team Bath Racing apart from a lot of other Formula Student teams, both in the UK and abroad, is that we have what we call a blank sheet design philosophy every year. And what that means is every single year we start from scratch. We, re we look to redesign and improve and remake every single part of the car. And really, we try to never carry over anything from the previous year's car. Now, what this means is not only do we develop the car very quickly because we're always improving every single area of the car, but also we get a much better understanding of all the engineering decisions and the engineering processes that go into designing every single part of the car. And that means we're able to progress from the car you see on the left of the screen, which we made in 2001, all the way to our latest car 20 years later in 2021. So a little bit about this car. This is called TBR21. It's our latest car. We're competing this at Silverstone at the end of July this summer. A few of the highlights are it's a full carbon fiber reinforced monocoque chassis, very similar to what is used in Formula One and other motorsport series. We run a KTM 500 motorbike engine. However, we add our own turbocharger to this and run it on E85 fuel. And that means we produce 72 brake horsepower and around 66 newton meters of torque. The car itself weighs 170 kilos with all its fluids and petrol on board. And what that means is we have a power to weight ratio of in between a Ferrari 458 and a Bugatti Veyron. So you get an idea on the performance figures we're talking about. We run a full aerodynamics package, a front wing, a rear wing, a floor, a diffuser, a pneumatic paddle shift gear chain shift system using paddles on the steering wheel and carbon fiber suspension. And now we also run topology optimized suspension uprights, which we're going to talk about in detail for the rest of this presentation. Before we do that, just a little aside on suspension design. So the main targets you have when designing the suspension system of your car is to have low unsprung mass. Unsprung mass is anything, any part of the vehicle that's directly in contact with the track and isn't supported by the vehicle springs. So that would be the tire, the wheel, um, your upright, your brakes, your wishbones, all of that. 
And the reason you want to make this as low as possible is if you model the car as this spring mass damper system you see on the bottom left of the screen, if you imagine the unsprung mass of the car was very high, if the car and the tyre went over a bump, it would take much longer for that tyre to return to the track if it was heavier. And what that means is you get uh, reduced grip during that period and also much more unsteady uh, feel in the car, which affects the driver and the overall handling ability of the car. Second is reliability. Obviously, the entire suspension system is a very critical part of the car. A failure in pretty much any single component within that system would be catastrophic. As you can see on the image there, that was a failure of a single one single component within the suspension system, and that was the aftermath. Finally, our final aim was to minimise the compliance of the car. Compliance is another word for deflection within the suspension system. And you can see here another team's race car is going around a corner and the rear left tyre you can see is bending outwards much more than the other tyres are. Now what this does is it's going to affect the grip that the tyre that that tyre is producing and as you go around the corner that's going to vary which again is going to both reduce the handling the overall handling capability of the car but also the way it feels to the driver as they're going around a bend which really reduces their confidence in the car. So those are our main aims for suspension design. You want to make it as light as possible, as stiff as possible for compliance, and also make it reliable. It cannot fail at all. So now onto uprights. So the upright part is the, uh, the light gray part that's indicated by the green arrow on the screen. And this is a really central part of the suspension system. So just to explain the image to you, on the very left, the carbon fiber uh, large part filling the screen, that's the chassis of the car. And then over on the right, that would be the wheel hub, where the uh, the wheel is normally sat and would hide all of the uh, the upright and the rest of the components in that part of the image. So the upright connects the wheel hub, as I said, all the way to the chassis, transferring loads along wishbones, which are these uh, grey carbon fibre rods you can see. It also holds the brake caliper uh, just behind the image that you can see. So what this means is the upright is a really central part of the car, and it has very high load cases because throughout the entire cornering of the car, either if it's going around a left hand or a right hand corner, if we're braking, if we're accelerating, if we're hitting bumps or doing any combination of these, it's taking all of the loads from the track and putting them into the chassis. Now that means, as I said, we've got very large, very complex load cases that are varying throughout a, tra throughout a lap of a track, which means it's a very large reliability risk to assess and account for all of these. It's also a very large part, as you can see, as compared to the rest of the components within the suspension system, it's probably the largest part. This means it has a large, it makes up a large proportion of the mass of the assembly, which gives us a large risk of increasing our unsprung mass in the design of the part. Finally, as I said, it's the central part of the assembly, which means if this part isn't stiff enough, if we have too much compliance within the upright, then we'll see large amounts of compliance amplified throughout the entire assembly. So what this means is the upright is a really critical part that we have to get the design for both strength, for stiffness and weight really spot on to maximise our handling performance. So how did we approach this problem? Well, first of all, we topology optimised the shape of our uprights using Altair Inspire. We then additively manufactured them from a high strength aluminium scandium alloy with our partners at Progressive Technology. And then new for this year, we made the uprights feet with a solid outer shell of material. And then inside of the uprights are hollow, and we filled those with a lattice structure, which is sort of a diagonal, very small uh, diagonal scaffold structure to connect all of the outer shell of the part together. And you can see a few of the images of the front and rear uprights on the screen below you. And in the right-hand image, you can see um, some portions of the lattice structure that are exposed, uh, just so you can see up close what that looks like. So, what is topology optimization and why do we use this in the design of our uprights? So the main reason we use topology optimization is, as I said earlier, we have very complex low cases into this component. And it's quite tricky as a design engineer to look at that and say, well, what form should the upright take to meet those low cases? So the way that this works is, first of all, you define functional part surfaces. Now, for the upright, these are things like the bearing seats, bolt pickup points where wishbones connect. You can see in the bottom left of the screen, that's what that would look like. These are surfaces that you must have for the part to perform and fulfill the role that you need it to. 
You then model what's known as a design space. Design space is an area where no other parts, such as the wishbones or the brake caliper or the wheel rim, exist, and where the topology optimization software is allowed to place material without it causing problems for you in terms of clashing. You then import all of this into Altair Inspire, and just like any other FEA software, you can add low cases, so adding forces, bearing loads, constraints, just like you can see in the image below. You can then topology optimize this, and what you're doing there is you're setting the software target. So in this case, we set it to maximize the stiffness of the component for all of the inputted load cases whilst meeting a specified mass of the part. And what you can see is it's taken the entirety of the design space and it's distilled that down just into the areas it wants the material to be, to be the most uh, useful to maximize the stiffness of the part. You can then refine this using built-in FEA software within Inspire, and then I remodeled that in, uh, in CAD to give a finished refined part for a nice refinement loop, just to keep tweaking and altering things as we went along. And now, just for, uh, just for interest, as I mentioned earlier, the uprights actually also contained a internal lattice structure. I just wanted to give you a bit of a background in how we designed with lattices in Inspire. So first of all, you can perform FEA on just a small piece of a lattice structure uh, with an outer shell. And you can use the, the deflection and force values from that FEA to estimate the stiffness of the lattice structure. The reason you do that on a very small piece of lattice is because, as you can see, the lattice is very computationally heavy to perform traditional FEA on. And if you tried to FEA an entire part made up of that lattice structure, it would take a much more powerful computer than I own to do that and probably more, much more time than I had available to me. So with that, you have a stiffness, a Young's modulus for your lattice structure. You can then go into Inspire and you can create a custom material with that stiffness. You can then run the topology optimization like I explained on the slide before, out of which you get, the, uh, you get a form such as on the, the image on the bottom right of the screen. So that's the direct output from Inspire. And then you can see on the very right-hand side of the screen, the finished upright component that's using the exact same lattice structure and past extra stages of FEA after that. And you can see that the two results are very similar to each other, which means we can use Inspire with quite a good amount of confidence to guide us in the form that a component should take while containing this lattice structure. You can also directly optimize the density of lattice structures within Inspire, and you can produce, therefore, parts that look quite similar to uh, this electric motor casing that Porsche have recently developed and publicized. So a little bit more about Altair Inspire itself and why that I selected Inspire and why we at Team Bath Racing continue to use it for our projects. So the first is the user interface. As you can see on the screen, it's very clear. It's very well set out with graphical buttons that are very obvious what they mean and how they work. And also with a very nice, clear model browser on the left-hand side of the screen where you can very easily see all the different solid bodies and topology optimizations and load cases you've input. Now, what this means is it's very easy to pick up and learn and use very quickly without having to go through a very detailed course or uh, instruction or be a very expert uh, FEA engineer in this software, which is really handy if you're just using this to try and pick up. You're designing a part as a design engineer and you just want a really quick guide on what the form of your part should be. Secondly, the ease of simulation setup. Again, it's very standard, sort of very familiar FEA to most design engineers. We're not going into the really expert level FEA softwares where you need to be a structure analysis engineer to ever really make sense or even understand how to use the software or perform an accurate analysis. Third, you can perform FEA on the resultant topology optimized part directly in the software. And this is very much quicker than uh, a lot of other softwares I found the way the FEA is performed. Uh, now, what this means is that you can perform very rapid design iterations. You can perform a topology optimization run, maybe setting a target mass of 500 grams. You could then FEA that and see, actually, no, this part is still a little bit overly strong, a little bit too heavy for my liking. And you can go straight back, you can close your analysis, and in the same window, you can rerun your topology optimization, say targeting a mass of 400 grams, 
and then you can FEA that and see if you're closer to your design targets. Finally, it's just really quick. It's a really quick, easy way of getting a good guide and a good, um, a good guidance on what shape your part should take. So not only are we using it for really complex components such as upfights with really varied uh, low cases and large amounts of uh, pickup points and areas that have to be optimized, but we also use it for uh, images for parts such as in the image on the top right of the screen, which is our suspension rocker for our spring. So that transfers the loads from the push rod of the car into our spring damper unit that you can see there. And we used Altair Inspire for this just to give us a good idea on the shape of the component, where we want the extra webs of material, just a simple 2D analysis, which again, really quick to do and saved us a lot of time of going through a traditional CAD and FEA iteration loop. So now on some results. So on the here you can see a machined upright for the TBR car that we use in testing just to limit the fatigue, uh, the fatigue life exposure of our additively manufactured part. This weighs 750 grams and is designed to have the same performance characteristics as our proper topology optimized additively manufactured upright, which you can see is almost 300 grams lighter than the, uh, than the machine part, which is almost 50% lighter. So a really big saving for such a central key part of our suspension system using Inspire. So a quick summary using topology optimization to design our uprights produce uh, over 40% mass saving on the TBR21 car. Using Altair Inspire allows for very rapid design iterations of component form with varied low cases, varied materials in different inputs. We've also identified a strategy to combine both topology optimization and lattice structures, which are the two main uh, most common ways of using additive manufacture to reduce the weight of components and fire and Altair inspire continues to be a key design tool for the entire for a large amount of components on the team bath racing car and i know that we're already using inspire to design parts for our future cars so thank you very much for listening